Hey everybody, it's Jeff Way with Detached Designs again. What I was going to show you today is how you can hook up a list view to an XML file and pull from that. So, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I just have a blank page. Let's go ahead and create an XML file. And for the sake of the example, let's say you're creating a list of, I don't know, speakers, okay? So we'll do this. Speakers, we'll call it speakers. And then in our XML file, we'll create the code. And then each one will be called speaker. And we'll do speaker name, John Doe. Let's see, what else? Speaker and a photo. And I have this, oh, I thought I did. We'll add that later. Speaker, you know what, I'm not even going to worry about pho a photo for this example. We'll do speaker, maybe a subtitle for a lecture they're giving. And then maybe a, a bio for each speaker. And you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to grab some sample text. Bear with me for just a second while I grab it. Lipsum.com, okay? And we'll just pull this as sample text for the bio of each person. So we have their name, their subtitle, their bio. That's fine for now. And I'm going to duplicate this. That's all we need for our XML file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a list view control. Now the great thing about this new list view control in Visual Studio 2008 is that you have complete control over the markup. Now with a lot of these other controls like the grid view and the repeater, the rendered or even the data list, they're rendered using tables, which obviously isn't ideal in this day and age. And you can get around that using some um, CSS adapters, but it's really a lot of work and it's, it's not worth it. With the list view, you have complete control, and you can use whatever you want. Okay, so we're going to add a list view, and let's just go set this up from design view. New data source, we're going to pull from an XML file. The data file is just where the XML is. And we'll leave these two blank. Okay. So that sets up our data source. Now, two things that the list view requires. The layout template and the item template, okay? So let's go ahead and set that up right now. No, not item separator. Let's go ahead and do the item template. This is where we're going to have the information for each speaker, okay? So, let's set it up how we normally would. We'll put their name under maybe a heading 2 tag. And what we're going to do here is add some expat. And we'll just pull their name out of it. Expat, speaker name. Okay? That takes care of the name. Now we need the subtitle for their lecture. Same thing. Speaker subtitle, speaker subtitle, and then speaker bio, okay? And we'll put their bio in a paragraph tag. Oops. Speaker bio. Okay, that should be good for the item template. So the list view is going to go through the item template, and for as many speakers as we have, it's going to duplicate this information. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we need to set up the layout template. Now one thing that's required for the, the layout template is a tag that has run at server included, and the ID of the tag needs to be item place score. So put it in a div. And we'll put this in a span tag. Let's go ahead and run this. Give that 
just a moment. Okay, so we are pulling all of this information from our XML file. And then the next step would be to style it however you want. So let's say we wanted to style each one. We'll just do a quick couple minutes. What I'm going to do here is in the item template, I'm going to give each one a class. And the reason I'm using a class instead of an ID is because when your HTML runs, you're going to have multiple items for each thing in the item template. So you'll have multiple IDs of speakers, and you, you can't do that. It's, it doesn't validate. You can do it, but it's, it's just not good practice. So I'm going to run this again, and now each section will be in a div tag with a class of speakers. And let's just do a quick styling of this using the web developer extension toolbar. Speakers. Give each one a background color. Normally I would add um, left and right padding to each child element, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. For each one, we'll do. And you know what? That's all I'm going to do. You can work on that on your own. Add a style sheet. Okay. And then all I need to do is just import that style sheet. Let's run that again. Now one thing that you might want, and obviously you should probably get a photo and style so the paragraphs aren't as long. One thing that you might want when you're doing a list of this type is to have each one have a different background color. Well, that's really easy using the alternating template. So let's go ahead and add that in. Alternating item template. And we'll add this in here. The only difference is we'll make make this class speakers alternate. Run that again. And we'll do speaker speakers alternate. Oops. do is we'll get rid of the margins in this case. And you know, it's, it's not too pretty, but you can obviously use your, your CSS to make this as great as you want. So copy this, bring it back in. So, why would you pull from the XML file when you could just put it in your main page? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's much easier to edit this way. And two, the alternative would be to keep all of that information in your .aspx page, and, and that gets really cluttered. So here, it's much fewer lines of code, it's just less of a headache. So, I hope this helped you, and if you have any more questions or comments, you can go to www.detachedesigns.com slash blog. Thanks very much.